What's up South fans around the world and welcome back to another video. So in the last video I picked up my new 93 Turbo X and in this episode we are going to do the first like bigger modification of the car. So the car as of right now has the 150 watts like I don't know what they call it the, the premium with seven speakers uh, head unit and stereo and it really doesn't like look very new and very up to date so today we are going to unbox and install a brand new android head unit so we get like the navigation we got spotify we could play our favorite youtube clips etc so let's just jump into it and unbox the head unit so to start off with we got this package from Amazon and in this package we have two new packages to start with this is the Atoto S8 Ultra the second generation of Atoto S8 so this should be the latest one they also supplied me with a reversing camera this camera we will not be installing today because it's really cold outside and this requires some wiring to the to the rear lights etc so this will be for a later video so in this box we are supplied with two smaller frames One really skinny one and one that's a little bit bigger. You see it right here. And in the S8 Ultra, you get supplied with a couple of brackets that you might need to put on the side of the head unit to make it sit really good. You got a bunch of cables. This is a GPS antenna for like navigation and stuff like that. You also got a microphone to add in like hands-free and Bluetooth. You got a USB cable to add external units. For example, the, the phone, etc. So here we have another USB cable. And then they supply you with a couple of ISO connections, different connections to power up your unit depending on where you are located. So we got two ISO connectors right here. One is named ISO connector A and one is B. I think we are going to use the one that's named ISO connector B for this installation right here. And the other two are supplied depending on where in the world you are located. So you might be doing this in China or in the US or whatever. So they, they supply you with a connector that fits your needs. This is probably an antenna cable. They supply you also with some screen protection for the head unit, so you don't scratch it up. You got a couple of instructions, manuals. And then we have the actual head unit itself. It comes really nicely packaged and it's a really slim little unit with all of the outputs like I said it's a slim nice little unit and you got your physical buttons on front of the unit and you also got some USB slot and what else do we have here you can add a sim card or microphone 
We have the reset button, volume up and down, which is really nice, power on and off. And you also got a home button. This is also really nice because on all or a lot of modern stuff, you really don't have no buttons, you just have the touch. And if the touch doesn't really work, you have to like disconnect the battery or or even remove the unit to be able to reset it. Here you you have like a home button if nothing should work so this is really really nice so in order to get this installed in a Saab 9.3 you have to get a custom frame that has these mounting points that you see on top here to make it sit really nice and this unit right here is a little bit bigger than a double din it's a 7 inch display and it really doesn't fit so we need to make some minor grinding right here on the top and the bottom so it fits inside here I will show you then Saab doesn't have or GM doesn't have standard connection for the, the ISO connector so you need a conversion connector that I got right here. I bought this from a Swedish company called BRL, BRL even. And it's, yeah, basically you can Google it to find it, but it's a radio adapter cable to, to get the proper and right connections. I will show you once we have it in the car. And then I got from my friend Daniel, who has done this previously. Uh, this is an in-car tech amplifier. What's his name? Amplifier interface is, and this is to avoid disturbing noises that could occur after the installation. So this should sit in line together with the ISO connector. So we we will get this all installed in the car, and I will show you how it sits. I'm not. 100% sure myself but we will figure it out some way so that's basically what's needed to get this installed in the car it's a lot of stuff a lot of this you don't really need for example these extra ISO connectors you won't need and if you want the, the buttons on the steering wheel to work you need to have like a CAN bus interface to connect in between the head unit and the, the ISO connectors as well. Uh, today I have chosen just to install this. Later on I will add the reversing camera and I will also add a subwoofer to the car. But today's video will be to just install the Atoto S8 Gen 2 Ultra and see how it works. I have started to cut a little bit into the frame. You can see some of the material right there. So what I have done, I have removed some from the bottom right here to make it sit flush. And also on the other side, so it's just the top and the bottom that need to be adjusted. But as it sits right now, it doesn't sit 100% flush, so this is Definitely not okay, so you need to grind away a little bit more. So I have done some more cutting, you can see on the edges here. I have done a couple of cuts to make it fit like a little bit inside of the frame as you can see right here. So now we will add the frame and see how it sits. might have to remove some more material, we will see. Like so, I don't know if you can see it, but you have like small little tabs that sit everywhere.
now it's actually a little bit too flush maybe and then we need to adjust the frame a little bit also to make it fit it's just a couple of millimeters but you really need to remove some material but this will sit really nice and when you get it to the proper location you can just add a screw to the side so it really stays where it should be. So I quickly removed the frame so you can just see how this sits. Some material grinded away from the cage and now I got the screws in to hold the unit in place so it won't like fall in or wobble when it sits mounted into the car. And I hope it will sit flush by now. So now we are going to adjust this frame a little bit because it's a little bit too high on both sides. The sides are perfect but the top needs to be cut off a little bit. So here is the final result after some grinding. Of course it's not 100% perfect but it sits flush. So now we will go out in the cold and try to remove the old unit, then we will install this into the car. So this will actually be the first time you see the car in daylight. We got the 18 inch Turbo X wheels that the car was delivered with. Now fitted with some winter tires. We got the interior. As you saw in the last video, we got all the carbon bits, pieces, the shifter, the thick Turbo X steering wheel, the Turbo X seats. But it's really cold outside, so we should just jump into the installation. But still we need to have a quick little look at the car. This is really epic. So I have owned the car since Tuesday and today it's Saturday. So yesterday we did a stage 1 tune to the car. So it now has 300 horsepower, 480 Newton meters of torque. And it's tuned by my friend Dion from the Netherlands. Just incredible, we did it really quick, really fast. And I have ordered some tint for this car because now it's just fishbowl deluxe. A Turbo X should be a black mean car, not like untinted windows, that's not the style. And this car is pretty OEM, so they haven't even painted the calipers or nothing. So I have a lot of stuff that I just want to refine and just make nice. But let's get into the installation. So before doing anything with the car I have just uh, unhooked the battery, the, the ground from the battery so we don't have any power into the car. So now we will start by removing this and this should be a little bit tricky. There are like clips down here in each groove that you see that hooks up so you have to be really careful when disassembling this because if you just by violence pull it out it will fall into a million pieces and you will never get it back together so we will see if I manage to do this right here I don't know if it should be clipped up or down but we will see So I almost got the ventilation out. I think there is just one more clip that hooks in somewhere. So I just went one by one by removing them. Yes, managed to get it out in one piece. So that's a huge success 
because this could be a pain in the ass. So to show you, here's how it's hold on. You got these little clips right here. You got a little pad right here to reduce like noise. Yes. So now I think it sits with T20 or T25 Torx. T25. held in by nothing. Maybe pull it up and out. We remove these GM connections. They've been sitting for a while, so... So now comes the little tricky part with connecting everything. But I think we should manage it somehow, some way. So we will start with this. This is the GM connections that you got right here. So from stock you only got two connections and you got the antenna. And this could only fit one way, so we will see. Like so. And then I got some sheet notes from my friend Daniel right here. Much appreciated, but then we should add the in-car tech, this right here. And I believe this is just to follow follow the colors. So, and then it should go to the, to the ISO connection that we have right here. And this is also pretty straightforward. If you can see, in one of the contacts you have like four pins and in the other one you have a lot more. So I think we will go like this. Like so. Now we got quite a harness right here. And here we got a lot of loose cables that you could add to other stuff that you want to add like rear camera you get a couple of steering wheel key if you want to add the canvas uh, power antenna parking brake amplifier turn on i think this is an important one the amplifier turn on i think actually this should go with this cable right here but we will see and that we have the head unit right here and it's pretty straightforward the ISO connection goes into the back of the head unit like so pop this right back in And 
and then we have the other stuff USB cables we won't be adding right now the FM antenna I think I got an extra cable for for my friend so this is also needs a conversion the GPS antenna on this one is not the same as a stock one so we can add this to the antenna then the radio will work at least like so and then we got a bunch of other cables so this is a Wi-Fi antenna uh, no, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. What is this? 4G antenna. We have the external microphone. We won't be using that right now. And then we have the GPS antenna. We could probably add this. So right now I think I have everything connected. So from the ISO in the head unit you have a little cable that says amplifier turn on and this needs to be connected to the to the cable that we have on the in car tech what was it called amplifier interface so the blue and white wire from the head unit ISO connection needs to be attached to the blue and white wire that says amplifier remote turn on and I think this should be it so we will try to just put the, the head unit in we will store the cable a little bit in the background See if it jumps to life. So this is that moment, always like when you have built a com complete engine or something like that, and you. So the first attempt did not work very well and that's just because this is a pretty special unit and it requires some special cables. So the first cable that I bought that connects to the directly to the GM or the Saab connectors is not you could use it but then you have to take like power from an external source and as soon as you twist the the ignition off it or before you when you turn off the car but still have the ignition off the the unit will turn off so it's not the best way of doing it so i have ordered a new cable from incartech which i'm going to plug in right now and uh, the unit should like turn on straight away so it's more like a, a plug and play solution than this was so this first little GM cable is going away and it's being replaced by this little loom right here so initially I was going to install this unit without having the steering wheels control but now when I'm installing this one right here I will leave a link in the description as well so when installing this everything will turn on autom automatically and I also will get the steering wheels control so that's more of a premium solution than I 
first was aiming for so we're just gonna go ahead and plug this in like so then we have the the second cables that go into the ISO connectors right here and I don't know if you could see but this unit starts to flash and I suppose that's the way it's going to be so I have Infartec is a serious company so they will supply you with with the instructions so here you can see that the number of flashes between pauses corresponds to to the to the make of head unit see the table below uh, for the number of flashes needed for each one press volume plus or volume minus buttons on the car steering wheel to increase or decrease the number of flashes when you have the correct number of flashes, press Seek Plus to confirm. So, so I follow the instructions. You just turn it on. Then this little light will start to flash. And for a Chinese head unit, you just adjust how many flashes you want for the set of head unit that you have. And I chose the number six, so six flashes, then turn the seek button one time, and then I pushed this little re reset button that's in here for five times, and now it's completely green. So now I have activated the steering wheel, steering wheel controls, and the ISO uh, lead is also connected to to this right here on on the ISO connector B you have this loom that says I don't know if you can see it steering wheel key plus and the other one is for steering wheel control ground so they are all connected so now we can just plug the ISO connector back into the head unit and it should start it right works, up. But now it should turn on at least. Success! So this video has really been a history in the making. I hope that when I edit everything that it's going to look okay. But I will link to all the products in the description box below and just last night I got a little help from Daniel who has been a big major part of this project and I also reached out to Saab Unleashed which you can find on YouTube. He has done numerous of these installation of Android head units in several Saabs and those videos are really nice to, to watch and have a look at. But last night, I or yesterday, I installed everything, got it up and running, and everything worked, except I didn't get any sound. So right now, I have installed everything back. So we have the filter right here. I have adjusted the filter a little bit. You can see down here that there are some small adjustment screws, and they are set to zero when you buy this. And you adjust them a little bit to let the sound through so you get like the perfect like noise cancellation in the sound. And in the ISO connector, the ISO connector B that's for the Atoto unit, uh, the amplifier turn on signal is not connected into the loom. So it's separate between. So that of course needs 12 volts to, to jump up and uh, get started. So we will just have a short look on how this loom works right now. So from the head unit we get the ISO connector B that you can see right here. If it's not too bright but ISO connector B that connects to the Atoto unit. 
Then I have spliced in the amplifier turn on signal to the blue wire which is the antenna. So when I start the car the amplifier gets the signal and gets turned on. Then everything is connected to the filter to reduce noise. And then it attaches to the Incartec ISO connector that connects to the GM cables. And here we have the CAN bus interface. So it's, it's quite a heavy loom for this installation. But now we have everything in. And for setting the steering wheel controls, there is an instruction with the Incartec. So it's just to follow the instructions and everything will work. So before we install it, everything back, we are going to check some features. So there you have the FM radio. Of course, that is nothing we could show right now. So I'm just gonna turn on the Wi-Fi so we get access to the internet. Of course you can install a SIM card here so you have internet access straight away. Uh, but the unit switches on super fast and the touch is incredible. It's so responsive. We will see right here. So I will share internet and we will see if it hooks up. It usually takes no time at all. And I switch off this annoying sound that's uh, like available as soon as you touch anything. Sorry about the glare in the screen but just, that's just how it is. Um, so we can jump into, let's say Chrome, I did open some, uh, this YouTube library where you can download like free music. And they have some Christmas songs right here, Let's see if they work. Now this camera right here is not the best for picking up the sound, but the sound straight out from the Atoto unit together with like the stock amplifier and the speakers is really really nice. It's super clear. deep bass and the sound with the with the filter on is really clear and really crisp I can't hear really hear any like disturbance so we can jump into a YouTube channel that you might know or that you have seen before video it's super bright and early let's just check the time really quick here I am right now in my new car so this is the video from when I but you can see it when I picked up the Turbo X, Turbo X and now we're in it doing that like the first couple of mods so it's ready for the winter 
and you get the perfect home button here, here so you don't have to like remove and you of course this is an Android unit so you can use the Play Store and install all of the the apps that you need to find we got the equalizer that of course could be uh, adjusted to make it work perfect for example now I don't have the perfect setting it's just like a standard setting so when we add this up it will be a lot better but anyways everything seems to work really fine as I said the touch is amazing you can go into maps need to sign up maybe of course it's a little bit slow with the with the Wi-Fi speed to my telephone but here you have like all the maps that you can play around with you got Sweden right here and of course you can set like navigation and everything and you have the Android Play functions, you get Bluetooth connection uh, yeah pretty much everything you might need so for my liking I'm going to install like um, Spotify I think it's a, a good way to to get the music and what you want to listen to get some playlists so right now everything is working fine so before we screw this back on we are going to continue the installation and install a subwoofer that I have purchased also so here we have the subwoofer that I purchased it's an active subwoofer with a 12 inch base so it got the built-in amplifier so now we are going to draw some cables from the front so we need power and we need a remote cable and then also the signal cables or the speaker cables and this fits so nice in here you can see how nice it follows the line of the back seat I did not know that so it was just by chance and of course you can have it centered or you can have it to the side and I'm not a audio freak so I don't know everything this is on a basic level but I know that if you're running the subwoofer in a sedan the base should be facing towards the back seat and usually this right here should be facing to the opening in the back seat then you will get the best sound that's how I ran it in my NV95 but for a sports combi the base should be facing backwards for the best sound so I will install it like this and we will see how how well it plays I think this will be quite dramatic to say the least and I got the power cable kit for it as well which comes with the, the remote cable you got a ground wire you got the, the speaker wires and we got the power cable together with the fuse that's going to sit by the battery and then we got some connections right here and it's freezing cold outside but we will manage this some way the hard part will be to get the power cable through some grommet or something in the firewall so right now we will do a little bit of a recap I have done some work it's freezing cold outside but I will try to get this done so right now I have hooked up the remote wire for the subwoofer to the antenna cable so we get a signal when the when the subwoofer should turn on and the amplifier so that's connected now we are going to connect the subwoof wires and in order to connect them you will need one of these 
So this is a RCA split for uh, uh, for the subwoofer cables. So in this end we have a male and two females. So we will just connect this to the sub output because there is only one. <clears throat> and then we will have these two wires right here. Now we are very low down in the in the frame. So we will connect red to red and black to the white. So we got some kind of order. Make sure that it sits. So now we will push this wire through. looks like a complete mess right now but it will all be fine when we get everything back together so we will leave it like that for now and I will update you on what I have done on the outside but because it's quite important and it's usually something that people don't show like all the way. So to get through the firewall is a bit of a hassle. So here we have the power cable and I have hooked it up to the fuse. And a lot of people go through the firewall at the closest stage. I have chosen to route it through right here because here I have uh, uh, already taken out for a heater previously so that was the easiest way to come through and this looks like quite a mess so I have removed the glove box the glove box only sits with four T25 torques like up here in the corners then you just pull it out or slide it out so now we got a bunch of cables. We got the speaker wires right here. We got the remote wire right here. And we got the power cable right here. So these uh, side seals just pop out. They are with clips like this. So just pull them up. I don't think we will have to undo this middle one because we couldn't just get the wire through. And in the rear I have prepared the ground wire so it sits underneath the floor it's a pretty short one so we will take the wires down here and go up under the seat and then I found a really nice grounding point right here I hope you can see it it's inside there. Just remove the 10 millimeter nut and screw it back on. So it's grounded to the chassis. So now we will fold up everything, put the subwoofer back, then put on the wires and then we will connect all the wires to the subwoofer and I will show you that in a minute. So now everything is connected. So it's really simple. You get the B plus positive, the power for the subwoofer, remote connected, the ground cable connected and the speaker cables. And all of the adjustments are set to minimum. And everything is... I have just tucked everything in. It's not final installed yet. And everything is hooked up to the battery, so looking really nice, tidy. So now we will see if it's 
jumps on. I don't know how this will react since we have had the power off. Starts up nice. Just gotta make sure that we got the internet connection since I don't have any any songs on the unit right now. And while that is connected we can just see if the remote started on the on the rear. Yes, we got power, so everything seems to be going okay so far. It has not connected just yet. I think we will start the car because the battery might be a little bit drained. the basiest of songs <laughs> it was really hard to find right now but it's playing really clear and really good so I will have to just play around with this a little bit I will try to put everything back together and I think we'll wrap it up like it is right now. So the unit came out really good. It sits so flush and looks really nice. Of course now it's not fully bolted in but it just makes the car look very much more modern. I cannot end this video without showing the final result. Of course it's glaring a little bit in the screen, but I really like how this sits, it looks really nice. Get everything popped back together, the glove box, everything. So a really nice upgrade and I have to play around a little bit with the subwoofer to get all the settings correct so it would play. 
and I'm about to install like Spotify and all of those nice things so I can keep moving forward thank you so much for watching this video I hope it turned out quite okay and it will help some of you so see you in the next one bye